Yeah, we're live. I don't know. I'm not, not too thrilled about this. So let's see. Let's check and see if our lighting is going to work here. Let's see. <laughs> no, that's not good. Let's turn that down a little bit. See if we can't get an intermediate thing here. So let's see if our camera will adjust a little bit. Well, that's what we got. We got, we got. So we are live. Hopefully everyone's doing good. Today we are going to talk about the thumbnail that I have up, which is a supercharged GM B15 LSX crate motor. <laughs> the LSX really isn't anything other than an aftermarket, aftermarket designation for, for you guys who are not familiar with it. But what, it, what this is, is a 6.2 liter LS3, if you will, based crate motor that GM offered basically as a power adder piece because it has low compression, it has six bolt heads on it. It came with the factory LS9 camshaft, which ostensibly is a supercharger camshaft. So, so a boost cam, let's say. Um, a couple of things that need to be changed about that motor. And we did this before we did any of this stuff. Um, we, we did run boost out of the way that it was, but when we really started getting serious with it, we changed a couple of things. One of the things that I don't like is that it comes with that camshaft, which is, that's fine. It's a supercharged cam and the, the LS3 or the LS9 cam, we've made lots of power with because it's fairly powerful. That's the most powerful, all the factory camshafts and it makes good power, but it comes also with the factory LS3, LY6, the, that 550 spring that they have that's blue or yellow or doesn't matter what the color is, but they're all, they're all basically for 550 lift. So one of the things we like to do on that crate motor is we change the, the spring combination, put a dual spring in it because we're going to put, and in this case we did because we put a bunch of cams. We, we ran a couple of Brian Tooley cams and a comp cam on this test. And so we changed the valve springs. The other thing I like to do is these come with factory head bolts. And I know that guys have run lots of power with head bolts and we've run lots of boosts on them too, but I also like to change the head bolts on these. We go to ARP stuff. And then once we do that, then the thing seems fairly stout. We've run lots of, you know, we ran, what do we run as high as 23 or 24 pounds of boost with a Whipple uh, four liter supercharger. So it, it did good. You know, it made lots, it made lots of power, made nearly Four, four digit power level. And we've made way over that with turbo stuff. So it, it did well, but I want to go over what we did with the cams and that particular supercharger, because I've got a list of different things that we tested. So we can talk about that. First of all, what I did and what I like to do whenever we do this kind of testing, when we're running a supercharged combination or a turbo combination, really, or any a nitrous combination, it doesn't matter. We like to run the motor NA so that I know how much power the motor makes itself. It also tells me that everything is in working order before we add boost to it. I know lots of guys just put blowers on these and run them and they, you know, if it works for them, that's fantastic. I like to find out what it does in a, so then we can figure out uh, using our formula, our fancy uh, holder power boost formula, whether or not the, the supercharged combination is doing what it's supposed to do. You put a blower on anything, it's going to make a lot of extra power, but is it making the right amount of extra power? And the way that we know that is that we run it in a first. And this is a low compression motor. This was like nine to one with that factory camshaft in it. And what we did was put a factory LS3 intake manifold and a 92 millimeter throttle body on it. We put long tube headers on it, inch and three quarter long tube headers, and then ran it with a, a Holly HP management system. And when we ran this thing NA, it made 478 horsepower and 446 foot pounds of torque, naturally aspirated. To put that into perspective, the way that we run the motors on the dyno, we ran this thing with the Mazira electric water pump and the open throttle body and stuff and long tube headers optimized tune with the Holly. When we run a factory LS3, we make 400 and we make about 20 more horsepower than that, 15 to 20 horsepower more than that. So it's, it's in the 490s. Um, higher compression. Uh, and also the camshaft would be a little different, although I think honestly, if I... In, in my testing, I think that the the LS9 cam makes more than the LS3 cam shaft. So most of that must be coming from a change in the compression ratio. The six bolt heads are not factory LS3 heads, although I'm, I'm pretty certain that they probably flow like a factory LS3 head does at least. So they should make comparable power. So most of the difference there you would think would be static compression, but you know, 
without doing an exact test, we can't say for certain, but uh, I'm just giving you an idea of what happens when we run other combinations that have um, similar displacement and stuff. So we, we started out at 478 horsepower, 446 foot pounds. And then we put the Whipple supercharger on there and we started with a 4.75 uh, inch blower pulley. We had an ATI damper on it. And we, we started off making, it started off under the load at like 3000 RPM, making 15 pounds of boost, 14.9, and then went up to 17.6 pounds. And the combination made 847 horsepower and 729 foot pounds of torque. So it did good. I mean, it was, you know, that's nearly an 850 horsepower motor. And then we went smaller in the blower pulley. We went from a 475 down to a 40, and we raised the boost uh, to our starting point was 18.5, and then up to a peak of 22.7 pounds of boost. So we went up about five pounds of boost, which is pr pretty good amount. Power jumped up to 926 horsepower and 808 foot pounds of torque. And then what we did was with the 475 pulley, we did a cam change in it. We put a comp cam in, which is the 459 cam. And so it's a 231, uh, 231 239 camshaft, a low 600 lift. And the power jumped up to 854 horsepower and 713 foot pounds. The boost dropped down from the 14.9 up to 17.6, down to 12.2 to 15.8. So the boost dropped. The other thing that happened in between this test, in between running the LS9 cams and, and these other cams that we're going to talk about, is this motor sat, for some reason, probably a leaky intercooler, I'm suspecting, and got uh, rust in two of the cylinders. The motor was taken apart. Uh, they did a ball hone on it and then put back together. Nothing else was changed in it, but that did happen. So it bears mentioning. Um, I, I didn't do a leak down test or a cranking compression test on, on all of those cylinders before and after to see that's just, it, it's just worth mentioning that that's what happened in between here. So after we ran the comp cam, we changed over to a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 4 blower cam, which is like a 239 cam, so a bigger cam. Um, more dedicated to positive displacement <laughs> blower. And what happened is the power jumped up from 854 horsepower and 713 foot pounds to 880 horsepower and 715 foot pounds. The boost was up actually with the Brian Tooley camshaft. So it's interesting, did all the boost bleed out because of the, <laughs> because of the comp cam? Um, or did the valve events uh, change the boost level? Because the pulley and all that stuff stayed the same. All we did was, and that was on the same day, we just did a cam swap. So it definitely did change the boost. It definitely did change the power. You know, we were up 30 horsepower. The, the peak torque was about the same. And it actually lost a little bit of power. It lost some power down below. So there's a crossover point between the two. Not surprising given the really wide LSA on the Brian Tooley. The Brian Tooley cam was bigger and it had a wider LSA, shifted power production out farther in the RPM range and, and wide LSA cams tend to lose power down low. A lot of these blower cams, the factory LS9 cam is a perfect example. When we compare the, if we and, and it shows this, it does this NA and it also does it under boost. When you run these, a, wide, a really wide LSA cam, I'm talking about stuff that's 120 or more like the LS9 camshaft, um, when you run those camshafts, they're pretty soft down low, and the LS9 camshaft does exactly that. We, we've, we've compared it to other camshafts, NA, and it loses a bunch of low-speed power, and so it did that under boost as well. So the, but the Brian Tooley camshaft made about 30 horsepower over, the, over that 239 comp cam, which we know has worked pretty well in the past, and that, that's with the same 475 pulley with a peak of 16 and a half pounds, and, and you'll note that 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 makes a good bit more power than the LS9 cam also. And the and with the boost being lower than it is with the LS9 cam chef, with more cam timing, that's exactly what we would expect. So nothing is out of the ordinary here. More camshaft, lower the boost, and made more power. That's kind of exactly what we'd expect. And then the final test was we ran the 4-0 pulley, raised the boost up to around 23 pounds. It made 990 horsepower and 827 foot-pounds of torque with the Brian Tooley Stage 4 blower cam. So it did very, very well. 
the the interesting thing to me is that this thing didn't exceed a thousand horsepower <laughs> with this blower, um, even at 23 pounds of boost. And, and I think it should. If we ran 23 pounds of boost with a turbo, it definitely would have exceeded a thousand horsepower. Um, I mean, we, we, you could do that on a fairly mild five free with 23 pounds of boost. So it was interesting. Um, but but that LSX motor, the B15 crate motors are very popular. They're very desirable. Sometimes I don't even know if they're selling them anymore. I know that they were really hard to get for a while because they couldn't keep up with demand, which tells you how popular that they were. And they were it was very common for guys to run these blowers on these things. And the that Whipple, you know, the, that they that was probably the go to blower for a lot of this stuff. And we've made a lot more than that, like I said, with uh, other kinds of force induction um, pro chargers and, and turbos and stuff. So. Okay, so the question is for the poll, can the B15 LSX crate motor make 2000 horsepower before braking? I mean, it's got an LSX block, it's got a steel crank. I honestly don't remember if it has four rods and pistons in it. I think that it does. Uh, somebody let me know on that B15. I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna look it up, but do you think that it could make 2000 horsepower before braking? Not with a blower, but with, with turbos on it. Let's see. Okay, there is our poll. Two thousand. To put that into perspective, we made fifteen hundred or a little more than fifteen hundred with stock block stuff. So, what do you guys think? Eric, Willie, what's going on? Is the LS9 cam larger than the LS7 cam? No, the LS9 cam and the LS7 cam make exactly the same power. And the specs are almost identical. The one thing that the LS7 does is the LS7 motor runs with 1.8 rockers. So it has more lift and I, I guess arguably a, a touch more duration. Um, but when they're run with the same rocker ratio, they make exactly the same power. That's good NA power, you think so, for a 6.2 liter? It's got a spark plug. It needs boost. That's right, Gene. Exactly. Modular power is here. Even if it doesn't have a spark plug, if it has an injector, it needs boost. That's right. Diesel stuff needs boost too. It all needs boost. Booster nitrous, the way of the gearhead. Yep. And both of those actually, we've, we've run both of those a few different times. Were you able to detect charger temperature when you tested this, Richard? I'd, I'd have to go back and look and see. I don't have that data in front of me. If we did, I'm sure it would have been after the intercooler because these had a, an air to water intercooler and we ran dyno water through it. So if we did, I don't think it would be between the blower and the intercooler. I'm liking the price of the Haltech LS Rebel ECU kits. Just sent an email to see if it works with the VVT. Good idea. Let, let me know if they, what they say, Dylan. Let me know if it works. This was a four liter Whipple. Uh-oh. Admiral uh, Prestige is out. Attempting 200 miles an hour with my Fox body, 390 turbo, T50, 6 Magnum, 315 gear. What do you think? Oh, will it hit 200? Um, how much power did that thing make? A Fox body doesn't take very much power to, to go 200 miles an hour. And I think you're way over the amount of power that's required. If you have the gearing right. Richard, I asked about the motor mount similarities of Coyote versus LS. Just tried it out. It's very close to the same. Not identical, but it's close. Okay. Not not surprising given they're, they're both V8s and they're, they're fit in similar chassis and stuff and that they would... Um, put the mounts in a similar spot, but that's cool to know. I think I'm ready for final assembly on my 125 Trail 70. Nice. It's a big block, the big block Trail 70. How much did the car weigh? 
the the vehicle weight is is going to have almost no effect on top speed. Would you recommend in a five three for towing stage one or stage two? Um, I would put a stage one in it. And there's lots of camshafts out there that will serve your needs. Shadow Ops, what's a GSP? I'm sure it could, but not for long. I hope the... I know GSP is some kind of dog, but I don't remember what it is. <laughs> George St. Pierre. Don't you need to upgrade the bolts in the engine before going 200? My car went 193 with a five liter. It was 306 inches. It was eight and a half to one. It had trick flow high port heads on it that were not ported. It had that that um crane 224 232 cam i'm trying to remember i think it had a ported and lengthened cobra intake manifold at the time when we did that and it had an r trim in it and the r trim was at a, only at about 10 pounds I had a 158 in my Caprice. It was 4,200 pounds. The when it when you when it comes to top speed, the weight of the vehicle has almost nothing to do with that. It becomes a, an aero load versus the the amount of power available. The weight is much more of an acceleration thing. What's the difference between a stage one and stage two? Well, the cam specs are the different thing. Building a four white stroker, the planning twin turboing, will it hurt anything running 30 over 30 thousandths ring gap NA? Nope, it'll be fine, NA. I guess the heads will fail unless there's something done to the head gasket. It, the, <laughs> you're only, the thing only needs to make like 500 horsepower to go 200 miles an hour. It's not that hard to do. If you have the, if you have any kind of aero work done to the car, mine had the Celine body kit on it. And, and was obviously lowered, but it doesn't hurt it going top speed. If you if the air feels right and the timing's right, it will do that without any problem. Waiting on my ejectors to come back from cleaning. I'm trying to boost my Gen 4, 5, 3 to 600 crank. What's a good ring gap size to go to? Uh, 28, 28 to 30 thousandths is what you should put it at. German short hair pointer. Okay, very cool. Uh, I hope it's feeling better, man. Short hair pointer. What's my first cool car? My first car that I ever owned was cool. It was a split bumper Rally Sport Camaro. I replaced them on a 2004 Tahoe that sat from 17 to 22. Currently borrowing the Tahoe. Richard, did you take a lot of consideration with the aerodynamics of your Mustang when you did that test? Well, I didn't do the test. I did. I ran the Silver State and I ran it 12 years in a row. And so we did a lot of stuff to it. We did a we did a front belly pan, a rear belly pan. Um, we tried skirts on it. We tried all kinds of stuff. But when it went that speed, it just had this lean stuff on it. it. And it did have a front belly pan and a rear belly pan to cover up the opening of the of the bumper and the skirt. Um, big problem with GTs because the the lower bumper valence like hangs down in the air and you'll see those we saw that when we were running world challenge that you'll see the thing buffer if you don't you know put it together properly and so i just put a slit a belly pan in into that and then attached it up to the where the um fuel tank and stuff is just i'm just i just trying to get the air to go smoothly there and not go up into that big cavern there and create problems 
I can't see what I can't wait to see what the boost is going to do with my 2.9 Whipple. I'm being told the three-inch pulley should be around 15 to 18. 94 Caprice Classic has a drag coefficient of 0.32. That's better than a five-liter Mustang is. So got some cams. I do. Yeah, did you send me a did you send me an email? Just send me an email and I'll put you in the saved file of the people. I'm gonna go down and check at the, the cams I have down there. Got a dog whose biological father was half German pointer, half chocolate lab. My mom was half German shepherd, yellow lab. She's a desert gam petter. <laughs> nice. That was a problem with my Caprice. Air would get underneath it at 160 and it would start changing lanes. Yeah, you don't want it to do that. And you have to have the suspension set up right for it as well. Fox bodies are getting expensive. Sent you an email today about an LSX 366B15. Oh, really? Oh, cool. I'll have to check it out. I have a 95 Caprice Classic now. I crashed my 94. Here, uh, Devil, here's the email. That's correct. There we go. What's your cool weekend cruiser these days other than the Silverado? A GoPad is really the only other thing that I drive. I have to get my Omni GLHS. Yes. Um, I have to go take a trip out to the car farm, guys, and, and, and get that car and bring it back here, which would be cool. I felt my 82 Mustang GT do an aero push yet on I-74, somewhere around 110 to 120. Usually that speed is pretty stable. Um, we did a lot of stuff to make the suspension work, um, going over frost heaves at, you know, 170 or 180 miles an hour, which that car did a lot. Um, the 193 was only when we put the R trim on it, but, um, it would, it would unsettle itself and go down to the bump stops and stuff. And then stuff got really pretty exciting. I ended up taking a total of 363 grams off the crankshaft. That's a lot of machine work, man. Looks awesome. Solid tan with blotches of copper brindle complete. <laughs> All right. My car's way too sketchy for top speed runs, 140. Clenching it up. I still have the L99 from the 94 and good engine. Yeah, those are good. Yeah, I got used ones. Uh, I got used ones and new ones for 159 plus whatever the shipping is going to be. Was recommended this cam for my LSX B15 with a 3.8. What, Josh? Which one? Okay, let's see. Uh, 225, 243 at 50. 118 LSA. That's a yeah. That's a blower cam. That's pretty typical of blower cam stuff. I did a ton of suspension on my big cars. The the other thing that you have to worry about that and and guys didn't realize this at the Silver State is that you know, making the power, you guys could get cars to go really fast. But back then tire technology was not, it wasn't designed to be running at that speed at that weight for that amount of time. This guy behind me on motorcycle, I said it looked like a rust tornado. <laughs> it's all good. Richard, which cam comes to mind for you to use a Vortec S trim on LS2 and a Corvette with W6 speed? Right now it has a 230, 240, 215, but it feels soft down low and doesn't drive all that well. That's a pretty good size cam. I mean, I would put a cam like in that, uh, like that, if I was wanting the thing to make power and, and you were wanting to rev this thing to 7,000. That's the kind of cam that would go in it. But I think I, I, if I was driving around with it, I think I would want something smaller than that. 
those melting tires running Firestone Firehawks. They're pretty old. Yeah. I think when I was running that, we ran um, either uh, BF Goodrich TAR1s or GSCSs or something probably on the Mustang back when we were running at the Silver State. I mean, when I was running the thing, the first few years I ran it NA. So it was before we put the blower on it. So it only went like a hundred and I think it went like mid one forties. And then we got it up to 150 something after a, a few NA mods. Um, and then, uh, then we put the Vortec on it and then that made a huge difference in power. Eric, you reduced the head gasket gasket thickness you reduced it by 63 thousands what was it was it was it really thick you still own a fox body yeah i still own my my i i'm still original owner do you have any inside information on the yet to be released 3.8 whipple for the ls why would they make a smaller one and so obviously i don't have any inside information i didn't even know that they were that that was a thing how's our um How's your pole doing? Can the B15 LSX crate motor make 2,000 horsepower with turbos before braking? 77%. You're thinking, yeah, she's got what it takes. The new gen is only three liter. It's supposed to be more efficient, yeah. Their older ones need did need a little bit of work. Does make great power. I guess that's the price you pay. The Red Hot Cam has my attention. I that would be that's where I would switch down to. I would switch down to either the Red Hot Cam or the Hot Rod Cam, and that probably would be much more drivable than that camshaft. Uh, why do Coyote motors love boost? Every motor loves boost. Every motor multiply with boost multiplies what's there. And a coyote has a lot there to begin with. I suppose you can theoretically stick a blower that's physically larger than your engine onto the engine. I'm not sure how safe it would be. It's fine. And you could you could put really big. I mean, if you look at the power output of some of these blowers. And some motors, you know, we, we've we made, um, you know, the, the guys have obviously four-cylinder motors making 1,500 horsepower. So that's that's way more than you're going to make from a 671 or an 871. Maybe a 1071 might do that. But that blower would be as big as a, as a four-cylinder Honda motor. Richard, do you suggest installing new lifters when installing a new camshaft? Not on a hydraulic roller. We we run the used junkyard lifters, the hydraulic roller lifters, when we do cam. You okay, my love? When we do cam swaps, so we just reuse those lifters. They they last seem to last a long time. My brother and I are thinking about making a replica Group B rally car, 1.5 liter Toyota twin charge. Okay, that'd be cool. The you're gonna do the Twin charge from the the um, guys do that with the MR2 motors, right? Julius, uh, where's the best place to take reference from an internal wastegate? Would it be better to take a vacuum reference from the intake manifold or the turbo? Your boost will be higher if you take that reference from the manifold rather than the turbo. Because the pressure will be higher coming out of the turbo, um, especially if you have an intercooler and stuff, than it will be in the manifold. So if you have the, you know, if you, what I'm concerned with is boost in the manifold. That that's where that's what's ultimately going to dictate the power. So I would rather regulate the the wastegate based on the boost in the manifold. Do overhead cam engines perform better with boost? They they perform better NA, so then that that gets multiplied. Can a one liter four cylinder make a hundred hundred foot pounds of torque? Yes, I would. Say, well, I don't know. I need to do the math on that. It, it can with boost, but I don't know about NA. 
pretty much a two. A, a Peugeot 205 16 is really, that's a cool car. Four liter blower on 13B rotary. Yeah, Jewish, you know what you know what the deal is. You know what you're doing. Is the two ZZGE on your list of engines to test and modify? I'd like to see how it handles mods with the heads designed by Yamaha. Which motor is that? I know it's a Toyota, but which which car did that come in? From a 2004 XB, we're going to try it and test it. Oh, Willie, okay, that one. Yeah. Putting a head gasket in that's only seven thousandths thick, completely eliminating the base gasket, and took five thousandths off the cylinder head gasket surface and surface. Is, is that enough sealing material for that? Are you just trying to raise the compression? Any benefits to switching the crankshaft in the LSX? I, I don't think so. The it's, it's already a good crank and I don't think you're gonna break the crank. You're gonna break something else if you're trying to max it out. CTSV Camaro, supercharger crankshaft. The Matrix and the Vibe, 03 to 08. That's not the motor that was in the Celica, is it? I'm a supercharged Pro Mod kind of guy. Looking at the Groupie Rally cars makes tons of power from the little motors. Yeah, I, I love the Group B stuff. I love the way that they look. I love the Ford RS200. Um, even the little uh, the little MG Metro, um, all of those, all of those Group B cars were very, very cool. The Lancia Delta, um, the Peugeot 205 16 is another cool one. Coyotes are bad. Tons of tons of head flow and RPM capability. Port and DI injection on the Gen 3. Yeah, that, those are good. The Gen 3 is really is really impressive. They respond very well to E85 and stuff. They, there's no doubt they make power. Yeah, there's there. We've talked about that. There's no reason to just just like one thing. I mean, wrong cam. Um, that there or or to not recognize the other stuff. I mean, the, the Coyote definitely makes power. There's no doubt about it. The B15 should have a crankshaft that can handle a blower. We ran a lot of runs on this one. A 2003 Matrix had the cool 2ZZ engine, revved 8300, BBT at six. Is there a way to have two spark plugs in an engine? Yeah, just take a look at any, any um, rotary engine. I think those have a leading and a trailing, and also Hemi's had had dual plugs in them. I'm only using spray gasket adhesive for the base gasket, and yes, it's all for more compression. Okay, are what what kind of fuel are you running in that, Eric? Josh, I bought a rebuilt LSX 376 with a bunch of aftermarket parts. It has a one cut mill heads done. I don't know what that is. I have no idea how much it affects compression. How, how much was cut? Usually they go, most guys when they cut it, they go 30 thousandths. Is it one millimeter? Is that what you're talking about? Richard, I got the LS3 together. The bottom is blown out on it. Unreal. What? Why is the, what's wrong with it? Yes, it is. Okay, it is that, is, it is that, um, didn't they call that the GSR or GTR or something like that? Didn't, wasn't that Celica that had the, the VTEC Celica motor? that was short-lived. Uh, oh, the NAPZ engines too also, yep. Yeah. The 
doesn't say on the receipt. Oh, the receipt just says one cut. So I say in the middle amount. Yeah, it could be a lot of times they'll do a minimum cut of one or two thousandths um, just to make sure that it's, um, you know, smooth and clean. Uh, they're not trying to mill it to increase the compression. If you do that just to make it make the main surface so that so that it will seal, that's fine. That's pretty normal for head guys. Uh, E55 AMG has a 48 valve twin plug motor too. Cool. 11 and a half to one or 11.8 to one. Is that what it was? Come on. What are you doing here? There we go. Ran 1190 with a pulley change and a tune. Yeah. Oh, the supercharged one. Yeah. Harvey wants to get most of my parts from Rock Auto for the 5.3, including the turbo, so I can get a Rock Auto magnet of my own build. There you go. Do LT heads fit on LS engine? They do. It takes a little bit of work because the um, the head dowels are in a different spot, but the bore spacing is the same, and they will go on. But the doing an LT head swap is very, very involved, though, because you have to change everything. You have to, if you put LT heads on an LS, you have to change the intake manifold, the rockers, the push rods, the camshaft has to be a custom camshaft, the headers, all of that stuff is different. And then also nothing bolts onto the front. None of the accessories bolt on anymore. Uh, Kenny Detweiler is still around. Yeah, he still he does the motors for the um, Speed Demon. I sent you the receipt of the build on, on my email. Okay. You're talking about the 91 to 94 Toyota Celica GT4 rally cars that use that motor. That's not the ones I was talking about. Richard, would a milled and ported 862 head perform just as well as a budget aluminum aftermarket head on a mild boost build? I, I wouldn't recommend you if it's a if you're running low boost, I wouldn't even recommend you porting the head. I, that's not necessary. If you have a turbo on it, you can make all the power that the turbo will do without doing anything to the head. That being said, a, a properly set of ported and reworked um, 862 heads will perform as good as almost any of the aftermarket heads. They just don't have the deck thickness, um, but they, the, they can make a lot of power, though. Just got my first LS after a long time of 1JZ and rotary engines. So you're used to RPM at least, right? 65 miles an hour, maybe more. I don't, I don't know. What is the, did you answer me? Did I not see what kind of gas you were running in that? What kind of fuel you're running it? I want to build an entire car just so that I can get free magnets. Yeah, that makes, that makes total sense, right? 2.5 Ranger motor. That's right. That, it also did too. We need to get this man a 787B engine. <laughs> Aston Martin, twin M90 setup on the 5.3. Put the largest Magnuson screw on RB26 on the 787. The Magnuson doesn't make screw blowers though, right? The Magnusons are all roots blowers. He uses heat and stuff. How high a compression can you run on 91? It depends on a lot of other things. It depends on the whether you've softened the chambers, depends on how much timing you're running, depends on the, the air temperature, the water temperature. A lot of other things will go into whatever the static compression that you can run. The cam timing plays a big, uh, has a big effect. Taylor, working on your truck. Four rotors on the dyno, you can hear it. There you go. I just want to make the sliding trumpet, so I probably will do that on an LS. Is Q16 good for boost? I think so. We, we've we run it on boost before. I don't know if it's the go-to one for boost, though. Got 6125 Lenani Voodoo H-beam connecting rods in the, LS, in the LSX376. Okay. Well, you're not going to break a rod, then. Nissan Racing, me with info to build a round track engine. It was a Z24 block, 
L20 crank and rods, 240SX dome pistons, and Mercedes Master timing link, and L18 peanut head. Did you guys ever dyno that combination? Was is it just a high compression motor? To how how did the head flow? Back in my teens, I built a 125 bike that did over 85 miles an hour. So I'm just trying to get close to that. It'd be funny to put an 871 on a four cylinder. Yeah, Willie, uh, M1 would be a better choice for high boost stuff than, than Q16. Oh, Nissan Racing helped you? Okay, cool. We have a supercharger off a Mercedes 230 compressor. That's what you want to put on a 1.5 liter. Does idling hurt an engine or is it heat? Well, how long are you going to idle it? The Some of the motors, I, I've heard like the Hemis have a problem with idle because they're not getting enough oil flow. Other, otherwise, idling shouldn't hurt the motor. Didn't dyno, but it ran off and left everything. Nissan said they wanted more cars and different racing venues. Cool. Is that Danny? Was that a four valve motor? I mean, the L stuff is the L series stuff is going to be is going to be single cam stuff, but. Josh, you have SRP Pro pistons. 470 bore. That's for a 6.2 build. Big engines have an issue with idle to begin with because of the low cylinder filling. Why would a big engine have a problem with cylinder filling? They should have more draw on a carburetor if it's carbureted and the if it's fuel injected the, the the fuel supply should be dictated by the by the computer still debating on a cam for a daily truck something like a 225 i got I, taylor i got the cam for you man i got it i got your daily cam and it's brand new Have you done any testing with a supercharger off the Mazda Millennium? I haven't, and I haven't seen any of those in the wrecking yard. Although, honestly, I, I, I don't think I've specifically looked around for that. Um, I know that if I saw uh, the Mazda Millennium, if I saw one of those, I would go over and see if it has a supercharger on it. But I've never gone there specifically looking for that supercharger. Dominican Republic, what's, what's, what's going on? Let's see. Uh, what is your opinion of the combination on an LQ9 with an F4L60? What, what is the combination? Uh, an LQ9 works good, and a 6L80 is a better than a 4L60. <laughs> Nitromethane test, I do want to do that. I don't understand why you try for 2,000 horsepower until after break. <laughs> I, I don't think you do that. Oh, you're you're talking about with uh, idling with a, <laughs> it's oddly specific uh, with a uh, on nitromethane with a roots blower. I think I think he was asking about idling like regular car engines idling, and not a not a top fuel motor. All right, Turbo Man, you're out. We'll see you. I'm going to be leaving a little early too. Did you guys all go watch the 4.8 video? I like seeing all the all those boost numbers on the LSX. 
Shrine cast or aluminum heads on a work truck six liter. I, I would put aluminum heads on it. I don't. I I would if I had my choice. I would not run cast heads on anything. For Jeep Wrangler, you want to swap out your 3.8 liter? Yeah, it's, a six liter is a good choice. Hey, it. it probably should have watched, but it's midnight. Yeah, no, you don't have to watch it now. It'll still be there tomorrow. It's all good. Highest boost level we ran was 52 pounds. Was that on a, was that on a fuel motor? Danny, it was a two-valve, okay. Oh, a 520-inch big block on nitromethane uh, with a 1471. And, and, and over 50 pounds, that's a lot for a roots blower. I have a set of 823s and 706s, which would you use for a six liter? 823s will make a lot more power. A23s um, and the LS3 intake manifold are a really good choice. That'll easily be 30 or 40 horsepower more than 706 has. Yeah, Vern, you'll be fine with that ring gap. Yeah, Willie, that's a lot of um, that's a lot of pressure <laughs> for square inch. That's a lot. That's a lot of pressure trying to separate that blower that you welded together. And I can't imagine if it's a 1471 that it was. It wasn't a billet case. Um, 1471 was it? Was it a was it an old cast case one? Struck a 60 to 427 with a. Four one hundred bore to get a four forty inch. You you have to sleeve it to do that. And I don't recommend uh, if you're going to sleeve it, then you cure a lot of problems. You can go to a big bore. We on on an aluminum block. We sleeved it and and made it a four hundred and sixty eight inch motor. So put a four one eighty five bore and then a 4250 stroke in it. But the sleeve length, the sleeve allowed us to go to that big a bore, but also the sleeve length allowed us to go that much stroke without pulling the, the skirts basically down out of the sleeve. Since the Big Bang six liter lived, can we see that revisited during the marathon? No, the marathon will, is not gonna happen at West Tech. The, the, um, internet service is terrible there, so I can't really run any sort of marathon at Westec. I don't understand why Holly is shying away from the LS VVT, but others not so much. And seeing how Holly can do it with the Hemi or the Gen 5, they can certainly make LS better. I agree. Although Brian said that, Brian Tooley said that they tried doing VVT stuff on the Gen 4 LS, and, and it said it didn't, and they said it didn't respond nearly as much as the as the Gen 5 stuff does, though. All right, good luck, Vern, with your assembly. It was built and was massively overdriven. Okay, where's the video of the B15 and the Whipple? That video is up. There was a 495 LS2. Yeah, I did that, but that was a tall deck block, though, and that was an RHS block. From the math, the engine made 1,800 to 2,000 horsepower. That's that's certainly possible with, you know, 50 pounds of boost on nitromethane. I don't know why a 520-inch big block wouldn't do that.
you you would want it to make you, you want it to be that much power right can the b15 lsx crate motor make 2000 horsepower turbos before braking 78 percent that's actually a fairly high number it's pretty good torque was monstrous yeah it would be the torque might be it might make more torque than horsepower on that combination although i don't how high were you revving that thing Have you ever messed with Chevy Ecotex? I have not. I've never even run one of those. I've I've been at West Tech when they've run those on the chassis dyno. There's a guy there that has a really cool one, an NA one in a Fiero. He's swapped a bunch of motors in that Fiero. He also had an LS in it, which was cool, but didn't handle very well. And he races it. He road races it. So with that Ecotech in it, he's come in a bunch to, to run a bunch of different configurations of thing, little things that he wanted to change on the Ecotech. He ran it at 9,000 RPM. Wow. That, that seems like a lot for a big block Chevy. Two more minutes. I'm going to have to get some more lighting in here, I think. My 125 cc crankshaft weighs 45 grams less than a stock CT70. Nice. It's self-deleted on the big end. Yeah. Mohammed, for an engine with 20% leak down, does it lose a lot of power compared to a 10% leak down? In the leak down test. I, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. It'd be interesting to test that. The, the problem with a leak down is a leak down is static and running the engine is dynamic. So the time for the leak down to actually happen um, is the time for it to leak out and lose power is very minimal. You, you would see that if you saw that as a bunch of blow by, you know, coming out of the valve cover or a breather then I think it probably would lose power. But I can tell you that we did a test where we ran on, in fact, we did it on the 302, the 302 Chevy, because it had a dome piston in it. And because I didn't index the spark plugs, which is, this is one of the reasons why I, I, I am for indexing plugs with dome pistons, because if you don't put the spark plug in correctly, then it hits the dome. So you either have to notch the dome and you, you mock all this up, putting the head on, notch the dome for the spark plug, or the spark plug has to go in properly or the piston hits the spark plug. And in our case, it did hit the spark plug and it banged up the walls of the cylinders and they were scratched up really bad. Like bad enough, you could feel it with your fingers. It was really bad. But I just took everything out and <laughs> put it back together and ran it because I had to get the dyno done. And we ran it and then we took it to the machine shop and then we had it honed and then we put it back together and then ran it again and it made the same power. So I, I didn't do a leak down to see how much of, of a percentage it was. It would have been, it would have been a significant amount given, given how much bad, how bad the cylinder walls were, but it didn't make any difference in power. You should have K series or B series swap the Fiero. Yeah, that's an option. Would you recommend doing a cam and top end wise for a work truck for a work truck? is if it's a six liter and maybe a mild cam and then do a head upgrade from the 317 heads to a 799 head or something, something like that would be, be, be beneficial. Dylan, so it angers them that you're putting a 3.9 in an RX-7? Uh, TK, the best stock heads that you can put on a six liter are factory rec port heads. There's nothing that's going to make more power than that. BRP, ETEC, two stroke snowmobiles require the plugs to be indexed. It was something to do with the direct injection. It angers them more than the Hemi putting the V6 in that because that's sacrilegious. 
Uh, Dustin, it's not a new, it's not a new video. It's been up for a really long time. Look in the, um, I don't know if I have the LS stuff broken down into rec court and cathedral court, but look in the boosted LS stuff, uh, in the boosted LS, um, playlist and that should be there. Yeah. Rec court heads like 823s or 821s. Either one of those will be fine. Those make more power than any of the cathedral court heads. I mean, they should. They they flow like 60 CFM more, so it's a lot. And on that note, it is time to go. But I will be back tomorrow, and part two of the 4.8 video will go up tomorrow so that we're going to have some boosts. We're going to have some blowers and turbos and nitrous. Oh, my. You guys all have a good night. <laughs>